Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to update fields within a document or replace entire documents using the Go programming language. So this is the fourth episode in my Getting Started with Go and MongoDB Quick Start series. So as you might recall, the first episode was on connecting to a MongoDB cluster, the second being creating documents, and the third being finding those documents that were once created. Now, in this particular tutorial, the expectation is that you already have MongoDB Atlas configured. So that means creating a cluster, whitelisting your IP address, and establishing any kind of user roles necessary for these tutorials. So let's take a look at what my particular MongoDB Atlas cluster has in it. So if I look at collections, you'll notice that I have several databases. We're going to be focusing strictly on the quick start database and the podcast collection. If you have other databases that you want to use or other collections, that's perfectly fine. But for this particular tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the podcast collection of the quick start database, something that we saw in previous tutorials. Now let's take a look at our code editor when it comes to go development. I want to run through a few things. First of all, what I want to do is I want to say go version. For this particular tutorial, I'm using Go version 1.13.1. When it comes to the MongoDB Go driver, I'm using 1.1.3. Now, if, you, if you're using different versions of either of those, the tutorial may still work. However, there may be slight differences. So if something isn't working correctly, please consult the MongoDB documentation or the Go documentation. Now, let's jump into our main.go file. There's something that I wanted to point out. I am using Visual Studio Code for my development, and I do have plugins installed that will automatically import dependencies as I use them. Periodically, we'll check back at the top to look at our imports to see what exactly had been imported as we go through the tutorial. In addition, I already have a main function created, and this main function has the code necessary for connecting to our MongoDB Atlas cluster. This is something we saw in the first tutorial of the series, and that included installing the MongoDB Go driver. Now what we want to do is we want to establish a handle to our database as well as the collection that we wish to use. So what we're going to say is we're going to say database equals, we're going to say client.database, and we're going to say quick start. When it comes to the collection, we're going to say podcasts collection equals database dot collection and we're going to provide it podcast because that's what we want to use. Now if I save it, it will underline this because it's saying that I have not yet used the podcast collection variable, but we will as we progress. So let's navigate back into our Atlas cluster. Let's take a look at our collection again. We're going to be updating this one particular document. You may have multiple. You can go ahead and create multiple if you want. Let's go ahead and update that document based on the ID field. So this ID field is an object ID. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy only the hash portion of that field. I'm going to go back into my editor. And what we want to do is we want to convert that hash into something that MongoDB understands when it comes to our Go driver. So what we can say is we can say ID. In this circumstance, I'm going to ignore the error if there is one. And I'm going to say equals primitive dot object ID from hex. And I'm going to pass in that hex. The next step is I want to do an update one operation. So just like our create example or our retrieve example, uh, we also have an update one kind of like a create, an insert one, or a find one. So let's go ahead and say result. We're going to, we're going to catch the error if one exists. And we're going to say equals podcast collection dot update one. It's going to take several parameters, the first of which is a context. So this is something that we defined on line 18. I'm also going to define the filter criteria. So which document is going to qualify for the update operation? So this is going to be a BSON map. We're going to pass in the ID because for this particular example, we're going to match directly on that ID. We copied the hash, we created it into a, an appropriate object ID from the hex, and we're going to pass in that ID. Next up, we need to define which fields we wish to update. So we're going to say bson.d, 
and we're going to use one of the update operators. In this case, we're going to be using set. And for the set operator, what we're going to do is we're going to say bson.d, and we're going to pass in exactly which fields we wish to update. So in this case, I'm going to only update one field. I'm going to update the author. And for this example, I'm going to say that the author is now going to change to Nicholas Raboy. Because if we go back into our Atlas dashboard, you can see that the author is Nick Raboy. So we're just going to be doing a very minor update there. So if I go back to Visual Studio Code, I'm going to add my commas at the end of the line so we can get rid of the errors. I'm going to save. You can see that it's we're getting an error still because we're not doing anything with the result or the actual error variables. If we scroll up, it's done a few imports for us, for example, the primitive and BSON. Uh, but if we scroll back down, let's go ahead and handle the error or handle the result. So let's go ahead and say, if error not equal to nil, let's say log.fatal error. So what we're going to do is we're going to print that error and we're going to end our application. Now, when it comes to the result, maybe in this example, what we want to do is we want to print out how many documents were updated. In this case, it's only ever going to be zero or one because we're doing an update one function call. So we're going to say fmt.printf. We're going to say updated percent %v for the value, documents, maybe a new line character at the end, and we're going to say result.modified count. And we're going to save it. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run it. So I'm going to say go run main.go and it says that it updated one document as far as our response goes. So let's go ahead and check out Atlas and make sure that that actually happened. So if I refresh, you can see that the author now is Nicholas Raboy rather than Nick Raboy. So the update one operation did happen. And if I look at my code here, it doesn't have to be based on a filter of ID. We could filter on any one of those fields within the document. And as long as there's a match, it'll update one document. Now let's look at the example where we want to update multiple documents. So more than one. So let's go ahead and make some changes to our code. Let's go ahead and say result error equals podcast collection dot update many. So this update many function is very similar to the update one. It just does different things. So for example, let's go ahead and add our context. Let's go ahead and add our filter criteria. So BSON M. This time around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter on the title of the podcast. I'm going to say title. I'm going to say the Polyglot Developer Podcast, because I think that's what it's called. Polyglot Developer Podcast. Perfect. I am going to create my update operator. So I'm going to say bson.d. And I'm going to say set and bson.d. And in this particular example, I'm just going to update the author back to what it was. And we're going to see other, other ways to do business going forward. But let's go ahead and say author. And we're going to say Nick Raboy. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to add my commas here. I'm going to save it. Now when I run it, it's probably... You're not going to notice any kind of difference when it comes to this first update one because it's already Nicholas Raboy, although it will still match because the ID hasn't changed. But when we look at these, this next example, it should change it back into Nick Raboy. So let's go ahead and add the, the curly bracket that I, that I forgot to add there. And let's add that closing curly bracket. And now we can actually try to run it. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and print out our modified count. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this line here on line 43. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. I'm going to say go run main.go. It says it updated zero documents this first time around. Um, so in this case, I guess what happened is it, even though that it found it based on the ID, it didn't update it because it was already Nicholas Raboy. And it updated one document uh, for the second update many operation. Let's go ahead and look at Atlas here. Let's go ahead and refresh. Should say Nick Raboy for the author. It does. Now, just for sanity's sake, let's go ahead and run it again because it says Nick Raboy now. In theory, this should uh, say modified count is going to be one. And then the second one around should be modified count is one as well. 
So let's go ahead and say go run main.go. And it did, it said one and one. So it only printed out the modified count if that field was actually modified on the match document. So the first time around, even though that there was a match, it didn't update that field because it was already Nicholas for boy. However, the second time around, it did update it because it was Nick Raboy. So we, we did two different operations here. We did update one and we did update many. Now let's go ahead and look at another example. Let's look at the example. Well, maybe we don't want to update one field, but maybe we want to update the entire document and we want to maintain the document ID. So basically what we want to do is we want to do a replace of that document. So let's go ahead and have a look. What we're going to say is we're going to say result error equals podcast collection dot replace one. We're going to pass in that context. We're going to pass in some filter criteria. So we're going to say bson dot m. This time around, maybe let's say author. And we're going to say Nick Raboy because that by the time it reaches this, it should at least say Nick Raboy. We have the filter. Let's go ahead and add the replace criteria. So this is not a update so we're not updating we're not using the update operators we're doing full-on replace so basically this third parameter is going to be the entire document that we want to exist for that particular id based on the match that was found so we're going to say bson m we're going to give it a title let's go ahead and call it uh the nick raboy show let's go ahead and say that we want to give it an author let's go ahead and say Nicholas Raboy, and we could add other fields as well if we really wanted to, but we'll leave it at that for consistency. And add my commas, so that way we don't get any errors. And I'm going to save it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. So I'm going to clear, and actually, before I run it, let's go ahead and print out the results again. So I'm going to say modified count. I'm going to paste it in, and actually, so that way it actually, so that way we don't get any zeros in the mix. Let's, and actually we shouldn't get any zeros because it's, it's Nick Raboy right now. The first step is to change it into Nicholas Raboy. The second step is to change it back to Nick Raboy. And this third step is to replace the entire document. So let's see if that works. Let's say go run main.go and it worked. So we have three operations. This third one is actually replace, but it made if the modified count was one every time. So it made that change every time that we that we called the operation. So let's go ahead and look at our web browser and we look at Atlas. We can refresh and we have Nicholas Raboy and the Nick Raboy show. So everything seems to have worked out correctly. So let's just go ahead and review everything that we did. Uh, and here are the imports that we used when it came to this particular tutorial. Now, after we connected to our cluster, we got the handle to our database and our collection that we wish to use. We picked a particular ID, so an object ID for a particular document. We converted it into an object ID from that hexadecimal value, and we used it in an update one operation. We use it as our filter criteria. Now we didn't have to, but we did. And if there was a match, and we know there was a match because that ID existed, we changed the author field from whatever it was to Nicholas Raboy. Now in the second step, we chose to do an update many. So instead of updating one single document, even though we only ever had one document, we chose update many. We did a search based on our title. So that was our filter criteria. And then we updated the author again. This time we updated it from whatever it was back into Nick Raboy. So in this case, from Nicholas Raboy to Nick Raboy. Finally, Instead of updating fields within that document, we chose to replace the entire document. We looked at our search, so our filter. Uh, we looked for author of Nick Raboy, which we know existed, or it should have existed. Uh, and we replaced that entire document with a new title and a new author, but the actual object ID for that document remained the same. So you just basically saw how to do update operations and replace operations. So these are very critical when it comes to understanding CRUD when it comes to MongoDB and the Go programming language, there is still more to it. So for example, we saw how to create, find, and update. The next step will be to delete. And then we're gonna explore other features when it comes to MongoDB and Go in future quick start tutorials.